The biggest question of this day is whether the Bengals would soar to new heights or plummet to even greater and newer depths. The expectations have become so low, the banners are even in lower case now. Here to find out, though, were tens of thousands of fans and at least one pigeon. Hey, the game's ready to start. You, quit reading the paper. You, wake up. Here come the Bengals. A new awning had been installed in the Bengals tunnel, perhaps to provide shade from the sun, or perhaps protection from angry fans, or perhaps from the pigeons. First series of the game, the Titans moved the ball without much resistance. Steve McNair to Kevin Dyson to near midfield. And then from the 13, Eddie George got a few blocks to the left. He turned the corner and didn't find any Bengals in his way. 7-0 Titans in less than five minutes. One fan yelled to the Bengals, you didn't even try. For the Bengals, you could see this day wouldn't go well. Jeff Blake incomplete to Marco Battaglia, and everyone seemed to spot a public mugging except the officials. It was the start of a day on which everything that could go wrong did go wrong. Late in the first quarter, Javon Kurse burst through the line, and he got to Jeff Blake, forcing a fumble and a turnover. The Titans had only 12 yards to go. Steve McNair found room inside this massive pileup for the final yard. And after a discussion of only 45 seconds, the officials decided the Titans quarterback had scored, and this was a 14-0 game after a quarter. Early in the second quarter, something went the Bengals' way. A snap on a punt attempt was fumbled by the Titans. The Bengals got the ball at the 50. But once again, the Bengals had trouble moving the football. They faced a fourth and one. The fans yelled, go for it, Bruce, go for it, Bruce. And when he did, he tried a pass to Darnay Scott, which didn't work out too well. The same fans yelled, Bruce must go, Bruce must go. The Bengals' best effort of the first half came in the closing three minutes. This pass to Darnay Scott moved it to the 30. But this play misfired. Jeff Blake, eluding the crowd, couldn't connect with Cliff Gross, who had daylight. Then the Bengals finished the drive as Doug Pelfrey missed a 32-yard field goal attempt. It was 14-0 Tennessee at the half. Toga, toga, chanted the Titan fans. I am not a crook, answered the Bengal fans. Some didn't bother to say a thing, though. They went home and left their message behind. The plays were there to be made. And, uh, um, you know, what did we make, one play? That play came at the start of the second half as the Titans kicked off to the Bengals. Tremaine Mack bolted to the middle of the field and hit a mess of players. Somehow, he then steadied himself and found a way to escape. I really don't know what happened. I went in there and uh, felt some people grabbing them. I tried to keep my balance, and when I realized I wasn't down yet, I just came out of there and looking for people to just fall over the top of me. That's why I kind of crouched up and uh, expected that, and nobody did it, so I kept on running. I just, just saw the end zone was going for it. 99 yards, and the Bengals were back in the game. We have a chance, they said. But the offense just couldn't get anything going when they had more chances. We can't run the ball. I mean, our, where's our running game? You know, they line up the same way. And, hey, we just got, we had opportunities. But, hey, you know, there's some elements down here I just can't control. About this time, we noticed a large but seemingly innocent banner being hung. And the banner police saw it. Uh, Breaker 1-9, has the boss seen this one? Well, they checked. The Bengals tried to move the ball with the pass. But Carl Pickens let it loose. It hit the ground. And the Titans got it back. Uh, they still have this sign up here. We need instructions. Stat on how to proceed. Over. The Titans made short work of their great field position again. This time, Eddie George went 15 yards up the middle. Tennessee had another two-touchdown lead. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, who put this sign up here? It's distracting the players on the field. You're going to have to take it down. It goes or you go. About this time, the fans had to wonder whether they would be better off going. Damon Griffin fielded a short kick. And when he tried to run through traffic, the ball was stripped away. The Titans had it again. The Titans went down the field, added a field goal to make it 24 to 7. And the fans said, ah, what's the use? Let's just take it down so much for the First Amendment. It's not to say the Bengals weren't playing hard. Heck, Jeff Blake was once again taking a beating. And when Javon Kerr sacked him, then tried to wrestle the ball away from him, Blake responded with some pent-up anger. He ripped the ball back in his direction, then he spiked it right in front of Curse. Good theater, but it didn't stop anybody from leaving the game. If I was on a team with a bunch of quitters, then I would be frustrated. I mean, then I, you know, you just have to accept that because the people around you don't want it. But these guys want it. These guys want it more than anything. 
and it just got more and more frustrating as the afternoon regressed. At the one, Jeff Blake was stabbed from the rear. At first, the officials ruled it a fumble. They looked at the replay. Everyone thought they changed the call to an incompletion. I thought he initially ruled that uh, he changed the call. Did you, I mean, did you guys no. think that? But suddenly the officials did an about face again and had to explain it in the middle of a very angry Bengals huddle. Did it mean much? Not really. The Bengals did score a late touchdown, Darnay Scott taking a hard hit, but bouncing into the end zone. But it was too late for anything meaningful. The Bengals had lost again. They walked under their new awning to contemplate their ninth setback of the season.